Hey everyone, what I've got here is the Poco F2 Pro. This is a flagship Android smartphone for 2020 that has a Snapdragon 865 and as you can see, this is a 5G phone. Now I've not been able to test the 5G signal, I don't actually have a 5G SIM card yet, but I have tested everything else and that's what I want to talk about in this video. I'd like to show you the menu system, show you, you know, the, the skin, show you all the settings and really just talk about what it's like to actually use the Poco F2 Pro every single day. This video is not for everyone, this video is for people who are intending on buying this phone. Now there is a tendency for many YouTubers to just rush out videos but I have been using this every single day for three weeks so I do know what I like and I do know what I don't like at this point. So I'll take this phone away for a second just to show you the box and show you that the version I have is the sexy Phantom White that has got 6 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. The other version, I haven't seen it yet. There is apparently a version coming out with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. I haven't seen it anywhere. Maybe it will come out at some point, but I've certainly not seen it available for sale. So I've did the unboxing and I've did other videos about this, so check those out. But what I'd like to do is just kind of go over the design. Now you can see that I've got a case on it at this point and this is the case that comes in the box this is the case that comes in the box and just briefly talking about the case you can see that there is an opening at the top here which leaves it a little bit exposed and there's not a huge lip on it either so this is obviously not the most protective case that you can buy there will be cases out there that protect this phone better but in saying that I love how slim this case is, which is why I've not replaced it yet, and it's just so light, it doesn't make the phone bulky, which unfortunately, most cases that do protect your phone, well, they just make your phone unnecessarily bulky. So, the case that they throw in, it's not too flexible, it's actually quite a hard case, but I really do like this case, despite the fact this part is exposed. So, let's take a walk around the phone here, just to show you what's here. At the back, you can see the quad camera system. At the side here, you've got the power button, and then you've got the volume rocker. Now, I will say, the power button, I like the fact this is red. I think this looks really nice. It's kind of reminiscent of the Google Pixel phones that have got a different color for the power button, but the position of the power button is just excellent. And that is something that people don't think about, but it's super important to me. Someone who's bought a Samsung phone who puts the power button way up there, and you always have to shuffle your hand up, this is in the perfect position. So that's good. The volume rocker's there as well. There's no buttons down this side at all. Now at the top, you can see that there's a headphone jack. That is something that you don't get in many phones today, and it's something that I like because I do connect microphones to it. And that's the thing with this case as well. Normally with cases, when the case is on, it's actually quite hard to connect headphone jacks and microphones correctly. So you need to take the case off. Certainly for me, you know, with using microphones and things like that for YouTube videos. But because this is exposed here, Yes, it's not good for protection, but it does mean that you can connect everything to the jack pretty well. So, power, volume rocker there. You've got a, a mic there, headphone jack, and then you've got... Well, we know what that is, don't we? We know what that is, guys. That is the camera. Yes, that is where the camera is hidden. And that's something we'll talk about later. I'll talk about the camera app later, but that is where the camera is hidden. This is it. This is a 20 megapixel sensor, and it's hidden at the top. The benefit of that, of course, is that you have this all screen display. You don't have any bars at the top. You've got a very thin bezel. You don't have a notch. You don't have like a teardrop camera like the, the Huawei P30 does here. It's just the display. And, you know, that's pretty good. Down at the bottom, you've obviously got the SIM card uh, slot there. You've got the USB C uh, connection port, and you've got a mic, and you've got the uh, speaker. Now, the reason I'm saying speaker and not speakers is because. Well, there's only one. There's only one speaker here. I will do a test later. I'll, I'll, I'll let you hear what it sounds like. As you would expect, with one speaker, it's not it's not leading the field this year. So this is a SIM card tray, and I didn't know before, there is no SIM uh, micro SD card slot here, but there is two SIM card slots. Now, when I first opened this up, I thought this was just a single SIM card tray. I just saw one, but the second one, is on the other side. So you can put two SIM cards on this, but you are limited to the storage that you get when you buy the phone. So yeah, that is the design of the phone. I think the actual design here, I think this is excellent. This really does punch above its weight. This is an affordable phone. 
one of, if not the most affordable flagship phone of 2020. And I think that this is a premium build. I think it looks excellent. And, you know, if you didn't see that there, you'd maybe think this is a Samsung phone or something from a more expensive brand. So I think the build quality is really good. It's really thin. Despite being a big phone, you know, as most phones are today, but despite that, it's quite light and it's it's quite uh it's quite easy to hold in the hand and the power bus power buttons in, in the right position, etc. So design wise, you know, design is always subjective, but I think this is a good looking phone and I think it's great to use. So you can see here they've got an always on display. Now, I don't always use this, but this is one of the options that you have where you can just, you know, see your notifications on the phone at all, all times. This is something you used to see a lot back in the day. I remember HTC phones used to use it with their uh, cases where it would show you the time and show you notifications and then you'd open it up and the phone would open up. But yes, I would say that this works quite well. I don't use it that much if I'm honest. I've switched it on just to show you guys it. So here we've got the fingerprint sensor. Now I have made it very, very clear that I still think that the fingerprint sensors from a few years ago, which were at the back, I've always felt that those are better. They're more responsive, they're faster, there's less mistakes. And switching from the back of the original Poco, I had the original Poco F1, and switching from the, the fingerprint sensor there to the front was not good for me because I was so used to everything being responsive, never making any mistakes, and then I, was, I kept pushing it here and it wouldn't work. But technology is moving forward, and I do think on-screen fingerprint sensors are coming, well, they're coming forward quite a lot. I would say, if I can get this here, yeah, I would say that this is without doubt the best fingerprint sensor I have ever used. It's just, it works. I still make mistakes occasionally. Every now and then I'll push it and it just doesn't catch my thumb right. You know, maybe I've put my thumb in the wrong position, but this works great. And we're very close to the point where the on-screen fingerprint sensor is just as good as the one that used to be in the back. So. Yes, I'm very happy with the fingerprint sensor. Now, the other thing about unlocking the phone is, well, you saw that there with the, the front camera. Now, normally with other phones, you've got the front camera here or it's in a notch or something, and that means that you just look at the phone and it will open up the phone. With this one, you do have to slide the camera up. So I'll show you here. I can point it towards me and I just slide this up and it sees me. Even with my headphones on, it can see me and it does unlock. So there you go. So face unlock is something I've used a lot in other Android phones and it's a feature I really do like. And I was really conscious about that when I was buying this, that face, and, uh, that face unlock would be a little bit slower, it wouldn't be a responsive. It's not that much of a hassle. I will say that it's not that much of a hassle. I thought it'd be a little bit of a hindrance because, you know, the, the, the cameras that has to pop out, it isn't. It's still quick. Obviously, you're, you're waiting slightly longer, but it's not a, a hassle. I will say as well, you know, and, and the flip side to that is one of, one of the coolest things about this phone is this flippy camera. And it's still something that grabs attention and it's still something that people go, oh, what's that? But as with all kind of, you know, gadgets and, and, and little uh, features like that, after a while, you don't notice it. It just becomes another part of the phone and the, the gimmick kind of wears off fairly quickly. Not in a bad way, but... You know, it's the first few days, like, oh, look at that, that's cool. But then after a few days, you're like, yeah, okay, that's fine. But really, the, the main benefit of this pop-up camera being here is so that you get this all-screen display. So, I'll put this back in the case because... No, if I'll leave it off just now. Let's leave it off just now. Just we'll sit there because what I want to do is jump over to the website and we'll just briefly talk about specifications. So, this is the official website, the official Poco website. And I looked over this before. I showed you guys, so I don't want to dwell on this too much, but if you want full specs as to what this can do, you can see Wi-Fi 6, 5G, etc., the 4,700 milliamp battery. If you want to learn more about this, please visit this website, check it out, refer to the specifications page, and you know, you'll know you see everything about this phone. You'll see the colors that are available, you'll see the main features and all that. What I will say is that when I initially uh, reviewed this phone, I think when I was unboxing it, there was a part on the home page that said it had LDDR5 RAM, but as you can see here, the version that I've got has got LPDDR4X RAM and UFS 3.1 for storage. But I'll leave a link to the GSM Arena page as well. This is perhaps an easier summary to look at. You can see the main features here, such as the 6.6 .6 inch display. 
uh, the quad camera system, the battery size, and there's a lot of other things here, but you can refer to that. You can see all the different uh, sensors in the back, 64, 5, 13, and 2, and then you've got the 20 megapixel motorized pop-up selfie camera there as well. So there is no denying that this is a powerful phone. It is a powerful phone. As a flagship phone, you are going to get flagship uh, performance and a, a flagship experience. So let's talk about the speaker, this speaker. Now, in other phones, what normally happens is you've got a speaker there and then you've got another speaker at the top, you know, kind of hidden around here. But this does not have that, unfortunately. So, play with us. So, what, what I would say about this is that, you know, for podcasts and things like that, this single speaker is fine. Obviously, with vocals, it's not a problem. With music... This is, this is really loud. So from a, a volume point of view, this is really loud. But with music, you get to the top end and it, it sounds really, really tinny. Even more so than other smartphones that I've used over the last few years. It just It's just loud. And you can tell that it's a single speaker. You know, at the end of the day, you're working with a single speaker there. And that is the downside to that. You get to the higher volumes, it's really, really tinny. It's just, it just doesn't sound good. But for podcasts or for just watching YouTube videos and things like that, it's fine. Netflix and all that is fine. But this isn't going to replace your, your Bluetooth speakers anytime soon or your headphones. But um, it is very, very loud. You can see I'm not even at full volume there and it's it's more than loud enough. I mean, this phone has, like all phones, has to make some sacrifices. You know, this has got like a really cool cooling system in here, which means that it doesn't heat up. And it does seem to work really well. It doesn't heat up. So it's got a really cool uh, cooling system in here, which helps with performance. But from the speaker's point of view, yeah, average. At best, this is average. It's loud, but not great. Just something to bear in mind. But as I was saying, performance is something that does lead in. Now, in comparison to the, lead, uh, the Realme X50 Pro, which I did review quite recently, I would say this feels less snappy, not by much, but just a little bit. Now, I will talk about performance later because, interestingly, the SSD write speeds are slower, but everything else is faster. But I will say, you know, I'm really nitpicking when I talk about this kind of thing. This is a really, really, really fast phone. And obviously, you know, connecting to websites will depend on your internet speed, yada, yada, yada. But everything's about Liverpool winning the league here. But, um... Yeah, this this is this is fast. You know, you're browsing the web, you're you're jumping around different pages. It's 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 fast. It's rapid. Absolutely no problems at all performance wise. So that's all good. That is all good. So performance wise, from a browsing point of view, from a usability point of view, this phone is excellent. And you know what else is excellent about this phone? And it's something I have talked about in my other video. It's battery life. Battery life in this phone is absolutely fantastic. Now, this charges at 30 watts. I think I charged at about 30.5 watts when I was uh, using it. And the battery life on this is just outstanding. So I just stopped recording to check my battery test video there because these figures threw me off. AccuBattery is saying that with a 100% charge, the screen on time will be five hours. Screen off is a day. Combined usage of 18 hours. That is 100% incorrect. It's giving uh, an estimated capacity of 4,350 as well. But this is incorrect, 100% incorrect. I believe it's because I've not been using the app. I've not used this app since I did that battery test video a few weeks ago because I had no need to test anything because I knew what battery life was like. But these figures are incorrect. When I first used this and I was using Accu battery every single day, the combined usage here was 47 hours. And that is what I see day to day. I'm getting a day and a half to two days, sometimes more of battery life. And if I go into the actual battery and performance area, this is in the, the main settings area, I can show you the battery, battery usage stats. Uh, it's been 23 hours since the last charge and it says I've got nearly 18 hours remaining. Now, if I put on airplane mode, so that I don't get any notifications, then that goes up to 21 hours. And if I activate battery saver, they're now seeing 33 hours. And that really is what I'm seeing. I'm using YouTube and browsing the web and checking emails and replying to everything, and I'm getting a day and a half to two days of charge. 
And you can see that there, 23 hours since the last charge, and I've still got 44% battery. That, you know, shows you what I'm, what I'm getting here. So battery life is without doubt one of the greatest features of this phone. And I've not seen anything else in another flagship phone like this, certainly with a, a screen this large for many years. And obviously, I'm going to state the obvious here, but obviously if you use the battery saver, you extend battery life. If you turn down the brightness and, you know, you extend it, if you turn it up, if you're playing games all the time, you'll use up more battery. That, you know, th that goes without saying. But I will say battery life is amazing in this phone. Possibly, possibly because of the display. This has not got the best display in a phone. It really doesn't. This is not the best display you'll see in a phone this year. Nearly all the phones in 2020 have got a fast refresh rate. They've got 90 hertz, 120 hertz, 144 hertz. This has got a 60 hertz display. And that's perhaps one reason, you know, in conjunction with the 4,700 milliamp battery, but that's perhaps one reason why battery life is so good in this. This is not the best screen you'll see on a phone this year. But in seeing that, and a lot of these high refresh rate phones, you know, 90 hertz, 120 hertz, the minute you apply a battery saver, it re reduces the refresh rate back down to 60 hertz. In other words, if you buy a phone with 90 hertz or 120 hertz for the display, to actually use that, you will use up more battery life. And for some people, that's what they want. They want the higher refresh rate. They want it to feel more fluid. But for me, I would actually take battery life. I think battery life, to me, is more important. And to me, this is, you know, the display is more than good enough. Like all phones, when you're outside and it's really, really bright, you might struggle a little bit you know, as far as seeing the phone, that's something I think most phones are guilty of. So let's kind of just browse around the settings area and show you what this is like as far as using it. Um, as I was saying, performance is good. You know, browsing everything, switching between screens, it's all excellent. It really is excellent. One of the things I like about this, um, I mean, I usually not, normally use a launcher. I'm using the default skin here from Jami, and I like the way that they've they've changed, uh, they've added categories at the top and just changed how everything's structured. So for the most part, all of these seem to be correct as far as how they've split them up. There's certain things here, like GoPro should obviously be in photography, but they've allocated apps into different categories, and it does help you find the app that you're looking for. Sometimes I do find it quite useful, and you can modify that, you can customize this layout, you can change the app categories, and you can create your own categories and all that as well. You can add more. And I think that's a nice feature. I do think that's a nice feature. Overall, though, I would say that this is not one of my favorite skins on Android. It's just not my favorite. One of the reasons for that is they've added a lot of really crappy apps, um, you know, like Xiaomi apps. Now, you can remove these. You can remove these, but they've added these things like cleaner and security and all that. I know a lot of uh, companies do this, Samsung and all that. They add all these default apps, but they, most of them, you, you can remove them. But the default apps that they give you, they've all got advertisements, which I don't like. I just don't like the fact that they've bundled software that's got advertisements built into it. I have heard their official stance on this, saying that they do this and because they want to make money and it's why they can deliver phones at such a you know small profit margin. But I just don't like the idea of certain apps that are on my phone that have got advertisements. But it's maybe a silly way for me to think like that because if I downloaded a cleaner from another company, it would have advertising on it anyway. What I would say though is uninstalling an app is just annoying because it's like, like you need to click on it. Like I'll show you, like say I want to remove, oops, that's Airbnb. Um, say I want to remove one of these apps, right? Um, that's crazy juice, right? So click on that. And normally in Android, it will come up uninstall, but you have to go to app info. So I need to go to app info and then uninstall. But some, sometimes it, it seems a little bit, um, difficult to do that um, as far as, I'll remove it now, um, sometimes when you click on an app, it just doesn't seem to catch it right where you're like, um, you click on it and see, you know, you need to go to that app info. Sometimes that doesn't show up right and it'll try to drag it to the screen. Another thing I don't like about it either is the split screen. I use YouTube a lot and when I'm watching YouTube, I need to you know, I normally browse or I or email or I'm, I'm just fidgeting and doing different things at the same time. So I'm watching something and, you know, doing something at the bottom. Normally what I do in other phones is I will hold this button here and then I will, you know, it just allows me to add a, a second app. But what you need to do is do that, click on it, then go to split screen 
and then you know you can add chrome or whatever again i'm kind of nitpicking here it's just day to day it seems like they've added an extra step in certain things to do things it you know it's just annoying in that way um it's still usable it's not a big big problem this is really a preference thing and i can use another launcher of course uh, as far as settings though very easy to navigate you know there's no problems there um as far as using it and there's a there's a ton of options here as you would expect there's it always on display uh, there's different display options there as well sound and vibration you've got the home screen not the most exciting thing to navigate it's themes different themes that you can apply yeah it's very easy to navigate um i, I mean as far as these digital well-being and parental controls and all that there's a lot of additional settings here you can see that i just wouldn't use um you know one-handed mode i don't think one-handed mode is necessary because the power button is down here so there's a lot of cool features in here kind of par for the course with android now i would say um but yeah not my favorite skin i probably would normally use a launcher with this uh but you know as far as how it's set up i'm kind of nitpicking here but yeah this is jami's skin but without doubt it is fast it is fast so let's talk about the camera app let's talk about the camera app i have did a video where i've walked outside and i spent a few days <clears throat> excuse me i spent a few days taking videos with the front camera and the back camera. Now, I've talked about all that already. I don't really want to focus too much on video quality because I've spoke about it and I'll talk about it again in the final review. I just want to show you the actual camera app because I refer to this camera app a lot in my video. And this is a common camera app. You now see, you know, it's applied on many different Android phones and it's, there you go, there's the selfie camera coming out. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's okay. I mean, you can see it's got slow motion, short video mode. You've got filters there, beauty and filters. And you've got super slow, regular, different options here. Um, video mode as well. We've got different filters up there, beauty filters, bokeh. And if you click up here, you can see the video quality. Now, the interesting thing about this is you can do 1080p at 30 frames per second. But if you switch to the back camera, there's an 8K mode. But there's also 4K at uh, 60 frames per second. So you've got 8K, 30 frames per second there. Well, I need to get rid of that 8K for that to disappear. So that's 1080p at 30, 1080p at 60, 4K at 30, 4K at 60 frames per second. So as far as the options available, as far as the recording modes, there's, there's quite a lot here. You know, I thought the movie frame mode was quite cool, but it add, adds a border. They've got this vlog mode, track, tracking moving objects. Uh, guidelines <clears throat> um, with the photos you've got HDR you've got the flash AI as macro mode the macro camera is quite cool actually it's quite cool that you can use that as well and then you've got different beauty and filters I mean I normally just use it in auto mode when I'm using this if I'm honest 64 megapixels there's a portrait mode and you'll get that bokeh effect you've got a night mode which I thought performed really well panorama and then you've got the pro mode where you can set the ISO and set a lot of different things, exposure, etc. Um, I mean, it, it, it's, it's fairly easy to use. I don't think anyone's going to have any problems with this. As always, you can use your own video ad uh, application if you want. No problems there. And there is some customizable uh, customization options here. You've got as far as, um, you know, camera sounds and you can see the video encoder that you use. What's this one? Pop-up camera. Ah! This is the one thing that I forgot to show you earlier. So this is another thing. Obviously, you've got the pop-up camera here. And I showed you that, you know, it pops up. But what you can do is you can change the color to any color that you want. Well, I say any color you want. You've got five colors. But yeah, it's pretty good that you can customize it. Um, you can see that there. You're opening the front camera too frequently. It's stopping me. Uh, and you've got different sound effects and all that as well. So you have all these different effects when it loads up. So you can do, you know, obviously you put the front camera. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, so that's all good. But what I would say is, see where you were getting that uh, notification there, where it was saying that the, the it was popping up and it's saying it's, it's going too fast, etc. I found annoying that if I'm, for example, taking a video and it pops up and then I need to change the settings or, or go in and change something, It'll go back down and then you come back in and it needs to pop it back up again. And you're like, 
we'll just keep it open. Keep it open. There's no reason for that to go back down. Just keep it there just now. I'm just changing a quick setting. I don't need that to go back and then go back up. But essentially, when this is not being used, if you're in any other screen, this pop-up camera will just disappear. It'll go back in. That's maybe part of the mechanism. I don't know. But you can see that there are some things built into this so that, you know, it protects the mechanism and you don't overuse it and you don't break it. So, yes, I've got the sound effect back again. So the camera app is, is functional, but it's certainly not the most amazing or exciting camera app available out there. But there's a lot of things here. There are a lot of things there. There's certainly enough there to keep you busy as far as video features and photo features and different little video and photo modes, you know, short video, beauty, filters, etc. So as far as the default camera app goes, it's okay. It's not the most exciting, but it's functional. This is, I mean, this is kind of what most Android camera apps look like today. So let's talk about performance. You can see I've got a folder here, performance. Um, I think I've turned the brightness up too high there. Get this right for you guys. So we've got performance here. Now, I've performed a few tests for this already. Now, the results here, if I click on it, oh, I need to go back onto the internet, take this airplane mode off. So it's showing you here that the read speed is 1052.51 megabytes per second and 188.35. And then you've got the other one there. I believe that was the one, this test was the one without battery saver and the one at the top, the battery saver actually performed better. But you can see read speeds just over a thousand, write speeds just under 200, 188 megabytes per second. Now that's lower than what I got with the Realme. The Realme in one of the tests, I got just under 1300 for reading and writing of 250. So as far as reading and writing goes, this is slower than the Realme 50, uh, X50 Pro that I reviewed. But it's still fast. This is certainly faster than most phones on the market. When it comes to reading and writing, you know, if you compare this to other phones on the market, you will see that this is certainly one of the fastest for reading and writing. You know, over a thousand megabytes uh, per second is really, really impressive. So reading and writing is good. It's not the fastest on the market per se, uh, but certainly at the top end as far as reading and writing goes. So let's look at Geekbench performance. There's two tests here. The first one is CPU, and it measures the performance of CPUs at performing everyday tasks. And the second one, Compute, does the same, but it does it for GPUs. So you can see there, the Adrenal 650. So I performed these tests a few days ago, and I performed them twice. Firstly, I guess we'd call it regular mode, and the second one I put on the battery saver. And the scores were pretty much identical, which to me shows that the battery saver does not affect performance. So that's good to see. But it's got a single core score there of 910, multi-core of 3258. And with the Realme X50 Pro, I was getting 903 and 3164. So we're seeing a little bit of performance jump here. 1%, 2%, 3%. And you see this across all of the CPU and GPU tests. So whilst the X50 Pro that I reviewed recently has got faster reading and writing times, perhaps because of the cooling built into this, but the Poco F2 Pro seems to be able to get more from the same chipset. So for the compute score, the GPL score, uh, I'm getting 3183 with the battery saver and a little bit less without it. But again, these, these tests can vary. In comparison, the X50 Pro got 3127. So again, you're talking at a, like a 1% jump. Now, all of these figures kind of seem meaningless and, and I think they are in a way. I mean, I, I'm always a believer in using real life performance, browsing, using, you know, playing games and browsing the web, watching videos, etc. But you can see how this compares to other phones from previous years. The OnePlus 7T, you know, you've got the Poco F2 Pro here, 904, 757, Huawei P30 Pro from last year, 684, Galaxy Note 10 Plus, 695. The Samsung Galaxy phones are a little bit strange because the, the Snapdragon phones perform in a similar way, but the Xenon chips or Xenos, those ones seem to perform really well in some tests and really badly in others. But you can see that this is performing, well, just amazingly. It's just smashing all the phones from last year, and it stands up next to phones from this year. Multi-core, there you go, 3223. Three. Yeah, just smashing all the phones from last year. And in the compute, this is a GPL score, and you can see a 3183, but compared to the Samsung Galaxy S8 and Note 8, those Xenon chips are giving us, or Xenos, Xenos chips, if I can pronounce it properly. Those chips seem to be getting high scores. I'm not sure about why that is, but 
you know, compared to other phones from last year, P30 Pro, etc., the score is better. I've also tested the Poco F2 Pro using 3D Mark. So this has got three different tests. And again, the first three tests are without the battery saver and the next three are with it. And the scores are almost identical, really. There's a, a, I actually saw a slight performance boost, boost with, um, with the battery saver on. And again, compared to the X50 Pro, these scores are slightly better. Not by much, but they are slightly better. Uh, 7196 against 7177, that kind of thing. Um, but all of these scores, again, it's really just to give you an indication as to how this phone performs against other phones. So I don't want to bog you down with all these figures. I do think that at a certain point, all of these figures are kind of meaningless. But I will say that if I had to choose between better read and write performance or GPU performance, I would say that the X50 Pro feels faster because it's got faster reading and writing times. And on a day-to-day -day basis, recording videos, taking photos, etc., that will give you more real life improvement over a one or two percent you know performance boost when you're playing a game or something so i would say that reading and writing is not as good as it is in certain other phones but it still smashes most of the phones in the market so yeah performance is great performance is great and, and clearly their cooling system is getting the most out of the snapdragon 865 chipset So as you can see, I'm playing Call of Duty Mobile now, and that's because at this point, what I'd like to do is show you gaming performance. And it should be no surprise, okay, it should be no surprise that I'm bad here because I've got a, a, a big microphone in front of me, but it should be no surprise that performance is good here. Um, you know, this is using a Snapdragon 865 with the Adrenal 650. It is, as I showed you with the, the performance scores there, it is a fast phone, and... There's a few things to note here. Firstly being the all screen display. This is one of the key benefits of having this all screen display because you don't have any kind of camera notches there. You just have the display and that's excellent. I really do like that. And I mean, I'm not someone who hated the notch or hated the teardrop cameras, you know, the punch out cameras, but I must admit it does, does make it look a lot better. Get in here. Um, it does make it look all better when you can see the whole display. With regards to audio, again, this only has a single speaker down here. I would say though, I kind of notice it more. I notice that more, the speaker, uh, I notice that more when I'm listening to music. When I'm playing a game, I just don't notice the fact that this is only a single speaker rather than stereo. So. I know it's more with music, I think it's more apparent with music, but when you're playing games, I don't think anyone will care that, you know, about the fact that you've only got, um, you've only got a single speaker. So here I have Need for Speed No Limits, and as you would expect from a driving game on Android or iOS, you have to click through all these menus in order to actually get to the driving game. But yeah, it performs really well. And come on, let me drive. Let me actually drive. Okay. Perfect launch, didn't feel like it. Um what's uh, what's interesting to me is that this has not been marketed as a gaming phone. It's not been marketed as one, but it kind of ticks the, all the boxes for being one. You know, it does have cooling and it doesn't have the best speakers, which is something that you normally see in gaming phones, but you can use headphones, you can use Bluetooth speakers if you are bothered with the sound, if you're not happy with it. But you've got this all screen display, something which most gaming phones don't have. They've normally got a camera up at this left-hand side. So you've got the all-screen display. You've got decent speakers, I would say, certainly for gaming. But more importantly, you've got a large battery. You've got a 4,700 milliamp battery that obviously char discharges a lot quicker. That's terrible. Um, it obviously discharges a lot quicker when you're playing games. You know, that goes without saying. But I would say that this is arguably one of the best phones to get for gaming because you've got this all screen display, you've got the headphone jack. Yes, it's a single speaker, but you know, you've got the cooling and you've got that GPU performance. So 
Bizarrely, this is maybe one of the best phones to buy if you're a gamer. So I've showed you Call of Duty and I've showed you Need for Speed No Limits and both of these games will take advantage of the GPU power that is available in the Poco F2 Pro. But I would say that most games don't need that amount of resources, they don't need that much power. Simple games like Mario and Scrabble and Sonic etc. But let's do one final test and I'll show you this game. You can see that, Game Turbo boosted successfully. This is a feature you see in a lot of Android phones now where they have a game mode that kind of optimizes everything for gaming and minimizes things in the background. But, let's see how we got on here. I would say again, I think this looks really good. You know, if I can do this here, show you the whole screen. Um, it performs really well, it's fluid, it feels fast. And, you know, obviously if gamers will be looking at phones with 90 hertz displays and and 120 hertz displays and things like that but I really don't feel that I'm losing out here with only 60 hertz. It does feel good, it does look good, feels fluid. The all screen display is great, I don't have any camera at the top getting in the way. I am dying here. Um, I don't have anything at the top getting in the way and again that's one of the selling points of this phone. From a gaming perspective, I think this is a really good option. It doesn't have the higher refresh rate for the display, but you do have a headphone jack, you do have cooling, and you do have incredible battery life, and you don't have any kind of camera getting in the way here, so you've got the full screen for playing games. So I would say this is a really good device for playing games, I really would. So I hope you have all enjoyed this look at the Poco F2 Pro. I realise that this has been a long video, but after using this for three weeks, I did want to explain what I like and what I don't like about this phone and really give anyone out there who's looking to buy this phone an insight as to what you can expect. The main criticisms I had were really about the user interface and if I'm honest, I'm kind of nitpicking. There's nothing here that I don't like, really. I mean, I can replace any of the annoyances that I have with this with a launcher, you know, as far as split screen and different things. It's a minor thing and I didn't like the idea of apps being installed onto my phone that do have advertising built in but most of the apps that I use have advertising anyway and you can remove those apps so it really is hard to criticize them too much for that. It's not a big problem certainly when you know they've explained that they're putting those apps there because they're trying to make money and this is a cheap phone. It's a really really cheap phone. I think across the board this is a good phone. It's not perfect but as far as using it every day, it's great. I love the battery life. I love, you know, the, the performance that I get with, um, you know, with browsing, with YouTube and different things. The single speaker is obviously something that, yeah, it's definitely a, a downside to using this phone. But you do get the, the, the battery, you do get the headphone jack, you do get that cool pop-out camera as well. The fingerprint sensor is really good as well. You know, I'm really happy with the performance of the fingerprint sensor. And that's something I don't normally say. And... I do like the fact they've put in this case as well. You can replace it, but the one that they throw in is pretty good, so that's all good. Across the board, I would say that this is a phone that is enjoyable to use. I don't think it's the phone of the year, but if you're looking for a, a good Android phone, a good flagship Android phone at a good price, it's really hard to see past this. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video, but please stay tuned for my final review where I tie up all my thoughts on everything as far as the overall package, the price, and my thoughts on the camera, etc. But I hope you've enjoyed this video, and as always, if you've got any questions about any of this, please do leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.